Yeah. Okay. And I would like to welcome the beautiful Alex Matthews to our to our training tonight, to our huddle. Really excited to have this beautiful woman. So Alex is one of my accountability buddies, which I'm really, really, really happy about. But this amazing woman is our, well, I'm not going to say our first NMD because I can't do that, can I? But actually our only active NMD, right, in New Zealand. So, so, um, and, you know, and it's so lovely that you're not necessarily our, direct upline or anything but it's so beautiful to have you in our corner supporting us all us kiwis you know with everything that's been happening and you know another thing is you know this woman has five children and a crazy life <laughs> and you know she got to nmd around having and these aren't just older children these are young children aren't they babies you know little ones so um I, I think it would be really, really cool to hear. I'm just going to spotlight you, Alex. It would be really lovely to hear your story. Absolutely. None of, none of my team have heard your story, so it'd be great to hear it. Absolutely. Well, firstly, the very cool thing about what we do is there doesn't need to be any scarcity. You know, like I love, I love it that we can really cheer each other on we're not going for one position you know that someone else is going to miss out on like we can all get to nmd and there's every reason for us all to cheer one another on which is something that i really love about what we do and it's very unique to the industry that we're in that we are in that we can totally 100 percent cheer each other on because there is no scarcity so um i thought I'd, i thought i'd start with that just on what you were saying tanya um, so for me, I started, gosh, it's like five, five years ago now. Um, I actually stumbled across this business online and it was at a time I had seven month old twins and I also had three other children under the age of eight. So we had five, five under eight. And um, I was actually feeding, feeding the twins. Like I had them on my, had them on my lap, feeding the twins, looking at my husband's Facebook because I actually had no social media of my own at that time. And um, stumbled across it online, and I was just like, "What's this about?" And I just thought, "Oh, you know, earning from home, you know, you know, for mums and stuff." And I just thought it was really intrigued because at the time I did not want to go back to teaching. I was thinking, I don't know when I'm going to go back to teaching. I just couldn't fathom when that was ever going to happen anytime soon. And I just thought if there was a way that I could start working from home around the kids, that would be amazing. So I actually homeschool as well, which obviously throws another thing into the mix. Um, and yeah, so that's how it all started for me. I just inquired basically and I, yeah, got my questions answered and it was just a literally a leap of faith jumping into the unknown, had no clue what I was doing. Absolutely. Um, can you homeschool my kids too? <laughs> oh dear, you probably don't want to see me some days, Amira. Um, yeah, some days it's just like, oh. Well, at least you live in the same city, so it's possible. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I didn't even realize that. No, I did. Oh, I did yes, no, that's right. We, we um, chatted at um, in Taupo about that. I had completely forgotten that. Anyway, Are you so, in yes, I'm in How did I know? I don't. I anyway, we'll pick up that another talk. time. Yes, yes, we did talk about that at some stage. But anyway, um, so yeah, in a nutshell, it was it was just one foot in front of the other, and I just got very consistent every single day. Like during the twins' nap time, that was when I would do my work. And the washing stayed in the washing machine. The dishes stayed in the sink. Everything just stayed as it was as soon as the twins went to sleep because that was the only time I really had to work on my business. Like I didn't have an abundance of free time. Um, I certainly wasn't sitting around twiddling my fingers bored. Um, yeah, and then also in the evening, the TV went off. Like there was just no... Um, what's the word? I was just, there was no desire to watch the TV once I found this business because I was just like, oh my goodness, I'm so excited. Like there's something I can do here. Um, because we, we had been living on one income for a long time and I always had that dream in my mind of what I wanted our life to look like. And I didn't want it to be filled with 
no, we can't do this or no, we can't do that because, you know, because of money. Like I didn't want that to ever hold us back as a family, especially homeschooling. Like I wanted to be able to give our kids opportunities and for money to not be something, you know, money to not be a reason to hold us back. So um, when I found this vehicle, I was just like, man, I'm putting a foot on the pedal and I'm going for this thing. And um, to be frank, when you've got twins, leaving the house is it is quite a mission. Like even just to go somewhere like to a friend's house, it, just to bundle everyone up and stuff, it is quite a mission. So for me, the business was very much an outlet as well, like a, a way for me to be able to have that adult connection and, um, yeah, to be able to have, have some time outside of being a mum. So it was definitely some sanity there as well. And, yeah, so – um, I think it was, gosh, I think it was like 15 months like in, that's why I hit NMD. So it was all pretty fast. Like it was a bit of a whirlwind. Um, it was, yeah, I, I kind of look back now and I'm just like, it was, it was pretty, a pretty crazy intense ride. Um, but I wouldn't change any of it ever. Like the, the, the work ethic and everything it took to get to that moment not that it stops at NMD because it definitely doesn't, um, but it certainly allowed us to, well, yeah, to create the lifestyle that I had always wanted, you know, to be able to be at home with the kids, to be able to have the money coming in. My husband was able to retire from the work that he was really hating at the time. And um, yeah, so that's a little bit of, a little bit of my story. And so it's been five years, five years since I started now. Crazy. Wow. I didn't realize you got there so fast, Alex. I've just learned something about you. Yeah, it was a bit Amazing. of a, it was quite a whirl, it was a whirlwind. <laughs> so did you, did you make a decision at any point that you wanted to get there or did it just happen? I didn't really, I didn't really make a decision. Like I wasn't someone that started and was like, you know, had NMD written on my mirror or, or anything like that. It was just um, like truthfully, it was really just, I just had my head down. I just had my head down, bum up, and I was just doing the activities that matter. That really was what I was doing. I didn't get caught up in, um, you know, in stuff that, that didn't matter. Like I was, yeah. I But in saying that, I was tag teaming with my hubby, and we do have quite a good, uh, what's the word, um, like we balance each other quite quite nicely like I'm kind of more of the relational one like I'm sort of you know take these new team under my wing and I love having that connection with them whereas Ben uh, really helped me in the beginning um, in that first couple of years helping these people get started like he was more of the nuts and bolts guys he was looking at all the numbers you know with qualifying and all that kind of thing so we were working as a team so it was almost like I mean yeah I definitely was able to put my foot down a lot more on the pedal because I had someone else doing it alongside me at the same time if that makes sense I wasn't doing it all by myself and um, having that person that compliments you like his brain works very differently to mine and together we're, we're quite a good team and um, obviously we're leading the team together and it was very much because I had no idea what I was doing when I first got started Ben and I were just stumbling through it together, but he would actually help me a lot of the time with verbiage and stuff like that. Um, so things that I'm a lot more confident in now, you know, like I don't need to run up the hallway and say, Ben, what do I say to this person? Whereas honestly, when I first got started, he, it was just constant, like, cause I didn't know how to reply to these people. I'd be like, Ben, what do I say? And he always was able to come up with really good replies and stuff like that but since then we've both gone to work and learned stuff like um, there's a really good book called never split the difference by chris boss um i always tell my team um you know that's i always talk about that book and training because if there's anything you can do for your team that's well, obviously it's going to help you is to help them be able to fish you know, like it's no point giving them the answers all the time to all their questions with verbiage. You want to teach them how to do it for themselves. So what's the, one, who's the author again? Alex? Chris, Chris Voss, V-O-S-S. -S. Okay. Um, he okay. does a really good, he does a really good leadership podcast. It's a 20 minute leadership podcast with um, Craig Groeschel. 
Groeschel is quite unusual spelling. It's like G-R-O-E-S-H-A-L, I think, or is it E-L? But they do a 20-minute interview and Craig um, interviews Chris Voss. And after I listened to the interview, I was like, wow, I'm buying this book. So if you're kind of like, oh, I don't know if I should buy the book or not, or yeah, I got the audio book and then I bought the physical book. I don't do that very often. Like I don't often do both, but I was like, I need a copy to actually look at and I want to listen to this as well. Um, so yeah, so since I've started, we've obviously learned stuff, like we've learned better verbiage or not better, but as in, yeah, like it works for me. Like I love, I love having a plan of how to tackle a difficult message. And when you've got a bit of a plan, and especially if someone asks you a question. And they're like, how would you respond to this? It's like, if you were using, like, I'll just say, I'd, I'd just say to them, uh, you know, Chris Boss, this is what he would do. And I would break it down for them. And I'd just break the message into a few sections, giving them how to do it, how he would suggest doing it. So then it's like, well, next time, they don't really need to ask me because it's like, it doesn't have to be the exact same scenario. But if they're going on breaking down the message... Um, so stuff like that has been great. Like we we do not baby our team like we used to in the beginning. Like I I am quite different now with how I get people started and stuff like that. Um, it's all learning curves. But like, for example, the teaching them how to do the verbiage, it's like, well, I would have honestly helped people with like 50 messages, you know, as they're getting started, just keep helping them over and over and over again. Whereas now it's like, really, you only need to help with a handful give them a tool and let them go read the book for themselves. And now they know how to do it. And it's like, well, yeah. That's so good. So is he a network marketer? No, he is a, he was a, um, <laughs> can you hear my vet, my husband? Yeah, I can hear him. Lead, lead FBI hostage, international hostage negotiator. Wow. So, okay. <laughs> and he's so got a, he, I guess he, he's got a communication. Yep. So he's the guy that's talking to the ho guy who's keeping the person host, you know, he's the talking to the crim, trying to um, exactly knows how the brain works. So he's the one that's shutting, shutting the thing down and getting him to release um, the victim. Uh, very fascinating. And then he's been able to correlate it over for business owners and even they're like negotiating techniques that will help as like a parent or as a friend. And I have to tell you this, Ben's over there, so he'll laugh as I share this to you. But um, Ben had read the book and he was ahead of me and I, I hadn't actually started reading it. And so we had this amazing conversation in the kitchen one night and I was just thinking, wow, like Ben's just really you know, really into this conversation here. He's really listening to me. And I was just like, wow, like, <laughs> and then at the end of the conversation, he says to me, he's like, did you realize that I was using negotiating techniques that entire conversation? And I was like, no, you were not. <laughs> and I was just like, but it's amazing. Like you feel so heard. Like it's, yeah. So it's a really, it's a really, really good way for you to be able to start um, communicating with people especially with prospects because it helps you to get to the nitty-gritty of why they're saying no or um, you know helps you not to make assumptions you you know you're really you're really actually finding out what is the problem and then I can't tell you how many people I've turned no's into yeses just using his techniques too because it's like it's quite incredible Oh my God, that's so good. Okay, team, you've got to get this book. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting it from my audio books now. So why did you get the paper copy? Is that because you wanted it as a reference? Yeah, it's just like, um, it's just because I know that I take more in when I'm reading it and if I can underline it as well. Okay. Um, I took in a lot listening to it on audio, but I just wanted a physical copy because I was like, this is, I really need to get this in my head and I'd listen to it, but I was like, I really want to read it and take this in um, and have, have it to refer to. Um, but yeah, there's not many books. So I've bought the audio and the physical copy for, but it, to yes. me, it's a really, it's a great resource to be able to share with team because then it's like there's no excuses then it's like if someone doesn't want to go and learn how to negotiate and doesn't want to learn how to communicate well 
it's time to move on and help someone who does. Whereas it's like, this is your business. Like you've got to, you've got to be the one to take responsibility and get good at, at having conversations. Um, so it's just great to have a tool to be able to do that. Great. That's awesome. Thank you, Alex. Gold right there. So um, let's talk about um, face down moments, eh? challenges. You know, and I know when we were at New Zealand NMD school, I know that you and Ben were talking to me a lot about what happened to you guys that you lost so many SC legs or something. I don't know if you want to share that, but I know that could have taken you out and it didn't. But, you know, have you had, how many moments have you had like that? <laughs> Where do I start? <laughs> there are many, there are many, there are many moments I could share. Um, but just on that on that particular situation, um, yeah, it is coming it is coming to terms with the fact that you will invest a lot of time into some people and sow a lot of time into them and and yeah, and some of them will just leave and you'll feel like, yeah, you will feel crushed because it's like this sucks. I thought they were my friend. And some of them leave on, but I've got no issues with people that just feel like they're called to do something else and they actually message you and they tell you that, hey, this is what I'm doing, you know, and, and they actually have the courtesy to tell me what's going down. Like, I cannot, I will never be upset at that person because I'm like, you need to do what you're called to do, man. Like, you're here for a purpose and you do what you need to do and I would never want to stop that person from doing that. But the, thing, the things that have, or the times that it's really crushed me, it's just when people just like, it feels like they just want nothing to do with you. Well, they block and, you. Pardon? Or they block you. Yeah. I've and had a lot like, of that. Yeah. And it's like, wow. And, and, and I guess it's like, I thought, I thought this person was my friend and, and in the amount of times you, you may have spent with them on coaching calls and just, you know, helping them and giving your time and other stuff and, you know, and then, excuse me, and then for them to turn around and for it to end that way, it's, you know, that can be upsetting. But then in that moment, you've just got to be like, you know what, how would I want to be treated? I would never want to treat someone like that ever. And so it just makes you more mindful of, yeah, not saying that you would necessarily be in that same situation, but it's like in any area in life, when you're at the supermarket or something happens and you've got the chance to be either a grumpy cow or give someone the benefit of the doubt and you know just hope that they just had a bad day and that's why they treated you that way or what have you so I mean yeah but that's definitely been been an interesting one and yeah in the beginning I had a couple of curly moments like I had I had a family member call me out like in this group saying the only reason why I was on fa Facebook because I'd only just joined of course you know to do my online business um and he, yeah, and, he, and he said in front of everyone, he was like, oh, um, you know, the only reason why you've joined Facebook is because you're selling that SHIT or whatever. And I was just like, what? Like, it was just, I was like, what are you serious? Um, yeah, I've had a couple of curly moments. And then my first re official customer cancelled their order. They had two, I think it was two premium orders with the Chews. Uh, also, they were getting capsules for their kids as well. So that was getting sent over from Australia and, they cancelled their order once they found out it was network marketing. And yeah, it was just two page email about how bad network marketing is and ripping it to shreds and saying all sorts of stuff. It was just nuts. But um, it's all fine. We're still friends with these people now. It's, we've, yeah, like it's, it's very interesting, the whole situation. But I guess at the end of the day, when you know, when you know why you're here and um, what it is that you want to create for your family, it's yeah you've just got to you've just got to block out the noise and be like you know what is that person how they're living their life is that what I want to create for my own family and if the answer is no and you're not going to be going to that person for advice well not in an arrogant way but it's time to move on look to the people that you really do admire the ones that you can see creating epic stuff and the kind of lifestyle that they're living in order to create the epic lifestyle. Like I don't, I'm not up for the CEO wage. If it means never seeing my family, hating what I do every day, getting up at six in the morning and not getting home till 10 at night. Like just getting a good wage doesn't cut it for me. Like I'm not up for that. Like I'll, I'd way rather live on a one income and live off the smell of an oily rag and get to hang out with my family. Like I'd way prefer that over the money. 
Whereas mm. this business gives you the opportunity to really have your cake and eat it too. Like it does. It gives you the opportunity to be able to work hard, but work smart, create a really amazing income, but not sacrifice those things that are really important to you. And I mean, what other, what other industry allows you to do that? Yeah, and I really love too what you said, Alex, about, you know, choosing who you hang out with, choose inspiring people. It's like, if you want to live their life, don't take advice from them, right? <laughs> yeah, I love that. It's so true, so true. So um, any other advice around getting yourself through challenges? You know, I mean, what you shared was great, but anything else? Yeah, like I love what, like what you just shared then. The thing that came to my mind straight away was the wise walk with the wise. That was in my NMD speech. So true though. The wise walk with the wise. It's like you you start surrounding yourself with the neg ferrets who are doubting you and who, you know, telling you that are you really going to ever make it and how much money do you spend on those products? Do you reckon you're actually going to make any money anytime soon? And, you know, like those people, it's just like, yeah, I've had to, I've had to sort of, choose to take a few steps away from some of the people that used to be super close to me just because I'm like I'm not up for I'm not up for the negative energy like I'm just not like I need to be around people that are actually going to help me get to where I want to get to I um, mean I remember I listened to um the gym yeah Jim Rohn um how to build a network marketing business I think it's yeah that, yeah. That, 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 yeah and I loved what he shared about treating your business like a newborn baby like I remember when he said that I was just like oh my gosh like I really could resonate with that like he shares um yeah when you first get started that we need to treat our business like a newborn baby like you don't just hand your baby around to any old person and let them you let them do whatever they want with your new boom. You're quite protective and you're kind of just like a little bit, especially with your first one. When you get to number four and five, you're like, oh, whatever, you, you have them. <laughs> you're yeah. like, go sterilize yeah. the bottles. The dummies yeah. have been outside for two weeks and you're like, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Whereas with the first one, let's let's talk about the first one. You know, you're very um, you know, you're very protective and you don't just allow any old person around that baby and you're quite, yeah, you're quite, yeah, you're very like, they're there, keep you, keep you, you know, keep your distance. And that's what we need to be like with our business. It's just like you need to treat it like a newborn baby. It's just mm. really nurture it and look after it and do the things that you need to keep it healthy um and if one of those things is stepping away from from those negative people then you've just got to do it um you've, you've got to be stronger than the negativity eh? yeah and i guess a lot of it too is resilience building like if you if you if you've got to realize that some people who start this business have not had any experience resilience building at all you know like some of them have never had any kind of negative thing thrown at them really where they've stood up to someone you know whereas for Ben and I we'd already stood up to plenty of crap <laughs> you know like we're done there making the decision about homeschooling you know and had a bit of backlash about that and you know we'd let a you know let a, let a home church back and we started that when I was like five weeks from giving birth you know what a weird time to start doing something like that and with that was with um you know we were due, due to have our baby my second son it was just weird timing totally didn't make any sense but it was like no we feel like this is the right thing to do and moving to New Zealand you know we had plenty of people saying what a dumb decision like you're not even you know what kind of job are you going to get you you know you're walking away from sort of your security blanket and you're going to go to New Zealand and start over like dumb decision you know so we'd sort of had plenty of resilience building over the years and I think that you've got to realize some people have never had that so yeah they've got to make the decision if they're going to stand up to the neck ferrets and be like you know what I'm going to do this and I mean you can have you can be the one to hold their hand and and believe in them um you know and I guess help them to see what you can see but at the end of the day you are going to get people that do not get knocked off their perch and <laughs> you just got to be okay with just finding the next person I mean it's just it's not that's probably one of my biggest challenges is that you can see the potential on people and you're like man you could totally rock this thing if you really wanted to um but then it's like they just for whatever reason it's not they haven't got the desire to yeah to to have what you want to have or to create what you've created and they just settle they yeah. settle for what they said they never wanted when you first spoke to them 
and they're like fear is stronger isn't it yeah and it's just like you know what yeah. they'll go and just do the do the job they don't really like to get that security blanket that's not really there let's be fair we've got no security blanket at the moment you know I mean we just don't know what's around the corner but um yeah it's just just one of those things where I guess the best thing you can do is just you've got to keep putting one foot in front of the other and be becoming the becoming the leader that you you know the best leader that you can be and always look inward <laughs> when things aren't going great with your business it's like well what can I do like I mean that's the only thing that you can control you can't control what other people are doing you've just got to you've just got to keep putting one foot in front of the other love it and um didn't Jim Rohn also in that how to build your network marketing business didn't he also talk about Nick ferrets in there too I'm sure he did Oh, I'm sure that was something I love too. So that's another great resource. If you haven't watched it, it's actually on YouTube. Jim Rohn, R-O-H-N, How to Build Your Network Marketing Business. It's really, really good. I've listened so, to it so many times. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've listened to it a, a couple of times, but the first time I watched it, I only just started and it blew me away. It was great. So um, I guess this is probably a silly question. But, you know, is it worth, is it getting to NMD worth it? Is this business worth it? You know, tell us what your life looks like now, Alex. It's totally worth it. Like, yeah, it definitely, yeah, I can't imagine what life would look like now for us if, yeah, if we weren't in the position that we're in now. Like, it's just allowed, it's allowed Ben and I to tag team the parenting. I don't have to do it all by myself. We've been able to give, give the kids some pretty amazing opportunities. Like, my son... Um, I've got actually got two of my older boys play at like a football academy, which is like an hour and 40 minutes away from our house um, because there's just nothing really close to where we are that um, sort of gives them the kind of opportunities that this academy does. So, I mean, we're traveling a few times a week down um, down to Porirua and, yeah, it's it's crazy that we can actually do that, like not just the financial side of things like even just petrol and that you know being able to do that sort of thing but it's the time it's like that Ben can leave at two o'clock in the afternoon and it's like cool you know he can do that and I, I do the Thursday run so I'll I'll go on a Thursday and we can tag team the parenting I mean don't get me wrong it is pretty full-on like <laughs> we're juggling like dinner and you know they eat out of the you know they eat out of their little food canisters a few times a week and that kind of thing but but they love it and the point is that we've been able to be able to create those opportunities for them because of the lifestyle that we have like we we can fit our work in in the times of the day that suit us and um yeah like I, I always do yeah, I say this to my a lot of my friends and well, not my friends and when I'm on a training like this a, a lot of the time people don't my kids don't realize um like they're in a bit of a fantasy land like I don't think they quite realize what most families look like you don't, you don't wake up with mum and dad there all day like we're seriously available from the time they get up in the morning to when they go to bed at night like we've got um your children yeah like there's not too many kids that would have both of their parents home with them um yeah so is it worth it 100 percent, it's worth it absolutely like it's like I said earlier what what can you what can you do income wise that allows you to be able to have freedom and flexibility, but then also to be able to have that uncapped earning potential. And the cool thing is it's like, I'm not like, I'm not anywhere near where I want to be. Like, you know, like this is the exciting part. It's like, yes, I've created some amazing stuff and, um, and I've got an awesome business, but like, am I sort of satisfied where I am right now? It's like, no, like I, I you know, I want to get to hundred club and then I'm like, right, once we get, one one business to 100 then we need to get the other one to 100 <laughs> you know like it's not it's not like it's yeah it, there's always room for growth and and even the most epic leaders in the juice plus community you know the most epic ones are, are not satisfied like they're still wanting growth too which is the exciting thing as well like we never we never at the end we never at the finish destination it's like the cool thing is we can keep keep growing and keep building indefinitely which is cool have you heard adam's new goal no 500 club cool <laughs> i know i know so when you were talking about how even uh, you know most epic leaders 
still want to keep going and growing their business, right? It's so true. So true. Yeah. Um, so, so what would you say to team who have been in this for a while or have even kind of just started and they're feeling a little bit deflated? Maybe things aren't going as well as what they had hoped. Maybe they're not feeling as successful. Maybe they haven't reached targets they wanted to reach and had these expectations around it, haven't reached it. What would you say to them? I think you've just got to pull it back into perspective. I mean, I think a lot of people can come into this thinking that within a few months they're going to be rolling in the money and it's going to be easy. It's like getting that understanding from the beginning that, you know, a degree takes three to four years and you're not earning anything and then you start earning money but obviously you're going to get capped pretty quickly. Whereas, so I mean, several years down the track from now, if I start a degree, you know, you might be earning some okay money, but you that's it. Like you're going to be capped. Whereas with what we do, if you work really hard and learn the skills and are willing to invest some time and perhaps be on the underpaid side of things in the beginning, you know, are you prepared to do that in order to be able to create what you really want moving forward. Um, I love the four-year career book. Like I love giving team a copy of that book because I feel like it really does, you know, like it kind of, the blueprint's sort of there. They can see what they have to do and it's sort of not a mystery. <laughs> it's like, whereas I think for a lot of people, they probably come in and they're like, oh, you know, I'll just, I'll do a couple of posts and all these customers will just turn up on my doorstep and I'll be rich. <laughs> it doesn't work like that it's yeah it really does take well if it was that easy everyone would be doing it right (laughs) exactly Exactly. so I guess they've just got to yeah I mean yeah just believing in them and I guess yeah but then yeah, I, I do have those people that, as I said earlier, it's like you really can see it. You can see what they can, you can see it in them, the potential. It's just helping them to realize it. So, um, yeah, I mean, tuning into training is another really important thing. I mean, and, and again, it's like you can't force people to come, you know, like it's one of those things that, and you're like, oh man, I wish, I wish she was here. I wish she was listening to this, you know, like I've had those moments plenty of times before, but just got to love people where they're at. and be the best version of yourself that you can be well it's like tonight there's usually a lot more on them than than now so yeah and yeah it's true you can't you can lead a horse to water you can't make them drink so what is next for you alex i know you said that you want to keep building what is it is it 100 club oh i would love to get to 100 club absolutely yeah it's yep just yeah I think for me, it's wanting to help people like raise leaders up to get to NMD. Like I haven't had an NMD leader yet. So I think that's going to be a pretty epic milestone when I have my first NMD leader. Like it'll be like, yay! Because having that mindset of like, yes, we want to build senior partners, but like, I guess, of course, you're going to build an epic business if you then start building NMDs. Like, of course, that's going to, going to flow into all the clubs once you start doing that so um helping people get to nmd is it's where i'm sort of yeah i've got my thoughts at the moment i'm just like right let's do this thing i love that love that i'm the same i'm feeling the same you know actually building an nmd leader would be great but i want to get there first <laughs> one foot in front of the other and we will get there yes So does anybody want to ask this beautiful woman and amazing leader some questions? Just either come off mute if you want to. It's much easier than popping it in the chat. But so much that you've shared tonight, Alex. I love that you're sharing so much um, personal development too, so many books and resources, because those are so important. And I'm the same. I love giving my team um, the four-year career. It's a great book. I've got a stack of them. and You know, because I brought some off you. (laughs) <laughs> such a good tool to have I mean honestly like I reckon if if people actually were intentional I've thought about this myself too it's just like man imagine what you could do if you just gave that book to even one person every single week like imagine like you physically gave someone a copy um yeah I mean online is awesome 
but there's nothing quite like um i do i've still got plenty of books yep so if you want more just message me anytime um yeah like i often i often have competitions and you know and i'll send out a copy and even if people already have a copy it's like right well this is this is now an extra one for you to share with someone i mean it's one of those books you kind of don't want just sitting on the shelf you want to have you want to have it circulating and, and people reading it um but yeah yeah i've done the same thing i've given them to my team and i'm like i've already got it so i've kept it for their team to give to them yeah so um anything else that you want to share alex any other goals that you'd love to to give us just yeah just i mean it's it's not easy to necessarily fall in love with the with the process sometimes when you're like yeah i guess it's the, it is the same activities that we need to do but we really do need to fall in love with it it's just get create the habits i mean atomic habits is another really good book um which i'm sure you guys have heard of james clear mm -hmm. um yeah i mean when i look back on that leading up to nmd it was just my my habits were so robot robotic that i'd never had to tell myself to go do work because it was just like that's just what i did like i wasn't even telling my brain to do anything because it was just automatically doing the work at the same time every single day um so yeah just got to create those habits and yeah if you've got the bad habits like if you've got the habit of turning on the tv for example and just you know zoning out for a couple of hours every night when you could be spending that time building your business for example it doesn't take long till you can create a new habit it's just a matter of making the decision and being like right that habit ain't, ain't no good <laughs> I got to create some better habits. Um, yeah, atomic habits is great. Um, so, how do you do, so falling in love with the process? This is a really good thing because I kind of went over this a little bit on New Zealand training um, on Monday. Uh, a way of falling in love with the process, but how would you do it? How would you teach your team to do it? I think it's just I don't I don't know if I mean like you, you hear about this all the time. It's like, obviously when you see people on stage getting their awards or getting their recognition and stuff, it's all very glamorous and it's like, oh, wow. But it's like, no one sees their day-to-day -day activities and they aren't glamorous. Like they aren't the exciting part of the business when you're sending the 50th message, you know, and it, you know, it's, and, and it is the same, like, um, Craig Grishel, he says this amazing quote, which I, I really love, and I can't quote the whole thing, but I can't even remember it 100%, but it's something to along the lines of, um, you know, successful people learn how to embrace boredom, you know, and to be okay with it. And that might sound like a negative thing, but it's like, you know, a lot of what we do, well, you think of like a tennis player or whatever, it's like they, they're doing the same thing every day, you know, like Olympic people, it's like, they're doing the same thing every day, like without, you know, like obviously there's a slight mix up in their regime, but to a big degree, it's like with tennis, it's like you're hitting the ball over and over and over again, or like the basketball player, it's like you're shooting hoops over and over and over and over again. Like they, they have to get okay with being just repeating, 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 and not being bored about it. Like it's, and it's the same with us. It's like, you just have to, you have to accept the fact that it is it's it is those same activities over and over and over again yep you just repeat 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 um so whether you actually fall in love with it i think is more i think it's more just yeah what i said earlier like just when you create the habits you're not thinking about it so it's not like oh do i love what i'm doing you know do i love do i love that i'm going to my room now for two hours to work it's just you just start walking up the hallway <laughs> to do your work and you're not you're not thinking about it because it's like this is what I do at this time of the day like this is what I do you know whatever time it is it's like between this time and this time this is when I do my work and you just yeah. do it and I know James Clear talks about it too doesn't he about attaching something that you enjoy to something that you don't necessarily enjoy, but that you've got to do to create the success that you want. 
to make it a habit so that you end up enjoying and the process right I'll quite often make my day like I have a decaf coffee and I'll like um you know it's usually about one o'clock I'll make my decaf coffee and off I go to the bedroom and I just so I have my coffee at the same time where I'm starting to do yeah so it's kind of like there is a little bit of good there because I kind of enjoy going up the other end of the house it's quiet got my coffee got my books got everything got the computer got everything there and I'm just like right now I'm in work mode and um yeah then I get into and then I get into it, but then I have to, I have to set myself a few rules around what I'm doing. It's like, yeah, no scrolling, no, like I know that I'm not doing certain things because let's be, let's be real. Like once you start looking on Facebook at random stuff, you can all of a sudden 20 minutes later and you haven't done anything. So I'm like, yeah, I try and be really intentional about using that time specifically to do, to do like, yeah, not scrolling. I'm actually doing the work. That's a great idea, Alex. Actually, that's what I do for writing is I light a scented candle and yep. then I have a, my nice sweet herbal tea, like I have a fruity herbal yep. tea, and I also have my chews yeah. <laughs> when I'm writing. Yep. But maybe I should do something like that for DMO as well because that's such a great idea. That's a yep. really good idea. Yeah. So it's kind of like you look forward to doing it, but it's like you're, yeah, you've got that habit. Yeah, you've got that habit that, it's what you do. It, yeah. Well, thank you so much, Alex, for all this amazing wisdom that you've shared with us. We really appreciate you. I'm speaking for everyone else here, but I know that they all appreciate you as much as me and what you've shared tonight. I'm just going to go to gallery view. Yeah, it was so, it's so good to, um, you know, to, to hear because I'm doing this like NMD series for the team, right? And I've been inviting lots of different kind of, well, you're only the third, to be honest. But, <laughs> you know, to have, to have different wisdom from different leaders and how you've all done it differently and it's all worked for you. And it's just so good for them to have this goal to just kind of take and use or not use, you know, and simple things. And I love the way you um, are so, what's the word? Um, there's a word and now, now I've lost it um, you know like that you're planned that you that you're very methodical that's the word that when you work that you work methodically I love that about you and that you use a lot of the, um, personal development so it's been really really good having you share tonight so thank you so much for your time Alex no worries at all my pleasure and thank you from everyone else as well. So, and thank you for jumping on, team. It's so good to see you, lovely ladies. Hi, Sheena, by the way. <laughs> we got you for a little bit. She had football training tonight, so I didn't think she was going to make it. <laughs> but anyway, thank you so much, everybody. Have a beautiful evening. Enjoy the rest of it. Thank you, Alex. No worries at all.